uh, i think everyone knows uh, the story how did uh, target supermarket figured out a teen girl was pregnant before her father did do you know the story there was one girl who yes. got a, yeah there was a girl who got a gift pack from target then her father got angry because she is not married what we need to wonder there is how did target supermarket came to know even her father got to know this that she is pregnant so what tar target did was uh, simply they have been tracking her uh, buying patterns in fact they are tracking every customers buying patterns based on that they did some customer segmentation based on the customer segmentation they clearly identified that girl falls in that pregnant category pregnant woman category that's why they sent a gift pack as a uh, what do you call token of uh, loyal customer so that later on even that girl will be a you know permanent customer for them that's why they have sent that gift pack there the main point that we need to look at is how did they accurately predict that girl is you know pregnant even her father didn't know basically crunching those uh, buying patterns crunching that uh, historical data and then coming up with the prediction that accurately that is nothing but a good example of data analytics or data science there are so many examples it is everywhere okay uh, the kind of marketing calls we receive there is a lot of analytics behind that uh, i mean nobody have you ever received any marketing call which says uh, do you want to drive our rd car test drive did anybody receive from this room no we don't receive such calls no, no. yeah because uh, no, you received no, we haven't in yeah. that group we yeah haven't joined that group. exactly basically it's uh, in I mean, before getting a marketing call they do a little bit of analytics and find out that who is the potential customer only potential customers get the marketing calls so this is all like i don't need to explain you that data analytics data science applications of data science is everywhere okay so what is data science data science is nothing but data driven decision making I'm not giving any new definition. Basically, you are building business strategies based on data analysis rather than any judgmental methods. You are removing the manual and judgmental error by using the data, making use of past experience. That is nothing but the historical data to make uh, or to build the uh, future strategies. That is nothing but the data science. In fact, if I have to uh, talk about more applications uh, recently with the advent of a lot of data that is coming up uh, uh, we have recommendation systems image recognition speech recognition fraud transaction identification spam filtering uh, sales leads identification if you are uh, remember uh, most of us might have used yahoo mail the spam filtering in that is way uh, worse than the spam filter that we have in gmail today almost 99.999% uh, of the spam will be pre-detected auto detected by uh, google but still uh, some of the spam still makes it to our inbox but uh, data science is used everywhere wherever there is data wherever we can improve the process by using the historical data we can uh, use the data science methods so what is data science here is an important slide that you need to look at data science is a fusion of many fields data science doesn't mean just data analytics data science doesn't mean uh, uh, big data data science doesn't mean data visualization it mean it is fusion it is a combination of many fields together if somebody tells us what is data science Data science means it is database management plus data analytics, including predictive modeling, machine learning, big data, distributed computing, coding, data visualization, and final reporting. All of this together is data science. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, people these days are anything that is related to data analytics, anything that is related to data visualization, 
that is also called as data science isn't it if you see outside two jobs will be called as data science only but their uh, responsibilities are totally different in one job you might be doing machine learning in the other job you are doing just data visualizations and reporting or in other job you're just coding for the uh, distributed computing environment so basically uh, in general the mixture of all these uh, fields is nothing but data science you start with database management you need to have that skill you need to be very good with databases sql etc then you need to be very good with basics of statistics you need to be very good in uh, predictive modeling machine learning those are like black box method and then uh, let me keep everyone on mute So I kept everyone on mute. Uh, whatever questions you have, you can uh, do it in chat window. I will uh, repeat and uh, I'll answer the question. So data science is a fusion of many fields. So if we are looking at data science, we need to understand that they are talking about any of these or all of these uh, techniques together. Uh, if you ask me, these are the four major types of skills. If I want to be a data scientist, if any one of us want to be a data scientist, if we uh, need a path to go ahead and become a data scientist, what do you need to be good at? You need to be good at in database techniques. I'll explain each and every one of uh, these uh, skills again, but these are the four major skills. Everyone. You need to remember this okay you need to be good at databases you need to be good at data analytics and uh, machine learning you need to be good at big data and distributed computing you need to be good at presentations or visualizations or final reporting generally people avoid or ignore the last piece that is uh, data presentation sometimes no matter how good an analysis that you do the way you represent your results really matter it's in fact these days it is giving a lot of importance especially data visualization people are getting uh, real good rewards for showing the data in a intuitive manner so you need to be good at databases generally some people ignore a uh, database knowledge also handling the data merging the data uh, cleaning the data preparing the data for analysis plays as important role as actually doing the analysis and then big data I'll, I'll explain you what exactly is big data basically sometimes uh, the conventional tools like R and SAS they give up after a particular complexity and particular size of the data they just uh, can't handle that kind of data so then we need uh, unconventional tools then we need distributed computing tools like big data Hadoop etc so basically whichever is beyond the reach of conventional tools within analytics you can do you can try to achieve them using big data so to be a data scientist you need to have four major types of skills and everybody in data science is a individual contributor so everyone need to know all these four major types of skills database knowledge when i say database knowledge everyone here knows that it is database management data blending querying data manipulations etl sql all those things so i think most of us here especially in this group have that knowledge already or at least the basics are covered from database knowledge uh, from our side at least if you're still not sure about the basics in database knowledge I strongly recommend that by yourself in this training we won't cover that you might have to do it by yourself start uh, you know uh, make sure you give good preference to SQL or any other databases uh, uh, basics Excel etc then the second part is predictive analytics and machine learning you start with basic statistics you do advanced analytics 
predictive modeling, machine learning, they all fall in the second quadrant. That is just 25% of the whole data science pie. First one is database knowledge. It is as important as analytics, let me tell you. And then the third one is big data knowledge. Uh, that is uh, distributed computing, big data analytics, unstructured data analysis. Here I want to take some time and explain you what is the difference between that second quadrant that is predictive analysis or third quadrant big data analytics. So predictive analysis till now it happened either on aggregated data or on smaller data sets. You will hardly see predictive analytics being run on transactional data. Even if it is run on transactional data, the data size tend to be smaller. Whereas big data analytics, it is run on a lot of really, you know, high volume, highly complicated transactional data. So the data, it's not about just size of the data, the data complicate, uh, you know, the way the data is structured also different. The data, input data can be images, input data can be voice, video, etc. So data analysis on these kind of complicated data which can be done beyond the conventional analytical tools that is a uh, big data or distributed computing and then finally last but not the least it is the presentation skill that is as important as remaining skills so whatever analysis we do we need to actually present it in a manner that everyone uh, in the group understands uh, starting from the analyst to the CEO so it need to be really intuitive the point that we are planning to convey in a particular graph or a PPT it should strike in the first look itself so that is a data presentation skill data visualization report design insights presentation those are the four major techniques that you need to know the techniques are database knowledge predictive analytics machine learning big data presentation skills now I'll pause here and I'll open the forum for questions if you have no questions I'll go ahead I'm unmuting you guys yeah please go ahead if you have any questions if you have no questions I'll go ahead no questions from my side okay Okay. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can uh, even mention them in the chat window. Now, these are the uh, softwares. Do we require ETL concepts as well? Uh, I would say ETL will be a plus. ETL is a really bigger term so within database itself if you ask me who is a specialist kind of thing so the guy who knows ETL is really the master of that first quadrant I what I'm meant to say was you need to have database knowledge like you need to have SQL basically before doing analysis you need to be comfortable with the data you shouldn't say that oh the table is here and uh, it's an RDBMS system so it's a relationship database and uh, one table customer table is here customer spending table is somewhere else on some other server I need to join them merge them prepare the data for analysis but I don't know how to actually extract the data from two different tables now a data scientist uh, or even a data analyst can't uh, take that excuse saying that I don't know how to handle the data if one data set is coming from Oracle, the other data set is coming from uh, another system, let's say SAP, uh, you should be comfortable in actually preparing the data for analysis. The general term for this whole database <coughs> handling uh, extraction transformation is called ETL. Yeah, basically, if you ask me, SQL or joining or merging is a part of like uh, a basic of ETL. So. Some people recently I have seen uh, they did so much thing on ETL itself they they want to make a career out of uh, just ETL because there are so many complications in the data sets these days mobile data video data this data that data 
they are saying that uh, there is a lot of uh, scope within ETL itself. But I don't think that is the right idea because remaining three quadrants are also important if you want to be a complete uh, data scientist. Uh, does that answer your question, uh, Ravi? Okay. Data science tools uh, or softwares, okay? So database uh, tools, I'm not saying everyone in this session, everyone in this class should know all these tools. It's not like that. What are the tools that fall in each and every quadrant? In databases, okay, you need to know at least SQL or MySQL, OLAP cubes, well and good, Teradata, DB2, SQL Server, Oracle, Informatics, Exadata, uh, OBIE, there are so many database related. OBIE falls maybe in reporting tools. There are so many database uh, uh, related tools. Out of that, at least we should have some basic knowledge of some of the most important tools like SQL. What are the analytical tools? Uh, either SAS or R or SPSS or Python or Veka or MATLAB. Okay, anything uh, that has already pre-built, inbuilt data analytics algorithms or predictive modeling algorithms inside that. What are the big data tools? Hadoop, Hive, Pig, Mahoth. So basically some of the analysis are not possible on R, SPSS, SQL, or yes, SAS. So we need uh, distributed computing tools. Those are Hadoop, Hive, Pig, Mahoth, Spark. Presentations tools, uh, one of our best presentation tool or reporting tool is Excel till now we use. Tableau, ClickView are really intuitive and uh, really handy visualization tools. Those are the tools. Are you clear about the tools? I'm going to the next slide. Uh, what are the designations. I'll not uh, go deep into this. Uh, database developer, if you really focus only on databases, uh, one day you will be ETL developer, MIS DB developer, data architect, data engineer. Uh, if you focus only on the second quadrant, you will be data analyst, statistician, business analyst, or sometimes data scientist. If you focus only on big data part, you will be big data developer, big data Hadoop developer, software engineer. If you focus only on uh, reporting, you will be a mess analyst, reporting analyst, or business analyst. So what is a good learning path, uh, a structured learning, learning path to become a data scientist? You start with any of these tools because these are the tools that will help us uh, uh, to, uh, to run the algorithm. So you start either with R or SAS or Python or Hadoop. Uh, preferably R or SAS. Then you do basic statistics and mathematics. Basics, uh, we need to cover that. And then uh, some of the basic algorithms like regression, classification, segmentation. Those are basic. That is part one. Then you move on to advanced algorithms, black box methods like neural networks, SVMs and boosting. And after that, you build uh, efficient models and distributed computing, fine tuning the models, and uh, you get into coding, etc. So that is the path that, you know, in a structured way, we can go and achieve uh, the goal of data, becoming a data scientist. What training should you take depending on uh, what kind of uh, profile you have? So these are the uh, major questions that uh, most of us will have or most of the times that I receive. I want to be a data scientist, what training should I take? I already have knowledge on few tools, what are my next steps? What skill should I add to my profile to make it to the next level? I'm new to data science, where can I start? I am already in analytics, what is this data science and all that? So what is uh, what exactly? Uh, <clears throat> are the trainings uh, that we should take. So it, as we discussed, uh, in terms of uh, 
more specific tool level uh, structured learning path can be step one you need to be good at excel and sql in analytics this is what i tell everyone that to be a good analyst it's not the statistics that you should start with because practically we have seen over the years that uh, uh, most of the analysts i think uh, 80 percent of the times all these so-called data analysts spend their time on excel they do a lot of analysis in SAS again bring everything to excel so excel and sql are the basic pillars axis good to have skill uh, SAS, R, or Python coding, basic statistics. I'm talking about just basic statistics, mean, median, etc. And then uh, high or big, like some of the easier uh, parts within big data. Okay, that is step one. I assume that most of us have already a good idea on step one, except the last uh, brisk. Then, right now in this group. I'll be focusing largely on step two, which is uh, this one. I'll be covering basic statistics and data cleaning, data handling, data analysis, predictive modeling. And then uh, I'll be covering, uh, I think we are doing a fusion of many things in this course, black box methods of machine learning, basic statistics and data cleaning, data analysis and predictive modeling. Tableau is an optional course that you can take at the end of the course. Hadoop and Hive, Spark and Spark SQL. I'll just give an introduction right at the end, and then uh, we will do everything, do all the data analysis using R. You're not familiar, like I think I, we are going to handle R in this course. So we will go through introduction to R, and then only we will go to the remaining steps. So R will be covered in this course. So there are three major categories or profiles. One is beginner, completely new to data analytics. Uh, the other one is intermediate MIS and reporting analyst. Uh, the other one is advanced, that is data analyst, predictive modeling, modeler. Uh, finally, complete data scientist. They don't need any training though. So these are the four major categories of profiles that I am uh, seeing right now who are opting for trainings. I would say all of us in this group fall in intermediate profile. What exactly is beginner? They have no hands-on experience on data analytics, no hands-on experience on tools like SAS and R, no hands-on experience on databases. So basically, they don't know anything. This is They are fresh out of college. They don't know anything. They want to take some training and get into analytics and the training needs are on the right hand side but we can skip this because uh, none of us uh, fall in that category <clears throat> if you are a beginner suitable jobs for a beginner are these reporting analyst business analyst data analyst analyst associate developer etl developer mis analyst etc if you are mis and reporting analyst or if you are an intermediate uh, then these are your characteristics you know excel you are very good at it you know sql if you already know sas or r one of these uh, if you if you have relevant business experience and good domain knowledge you are very good at data exploration validation and cleaning you worked on lot of mis and reporting projects created lot of dashboards by now already dashboards and reports you have limited experience in predictive modeling techniques like logistic regression, decision trees, time series. I'm saying you might have built already. I would say kind of it was limited. It was not a hundred percent job. You worked on few automation projects already or many automation projects. You want to get into really the core analytics, the predictive modeling, the data science, the model building. If you can identify yourself as this guy then this is for this particular group we designed the training the kind of topics that we chose the tools that we chose really fit for this type of uh, uh, profile can you identify yourself as MIS and reporting analyst or reporting data analyst 
so your training needs anyway we will uh, see that later so and the third i mean what are the suitable jobs for reporting analyst if you are reporting analyst you should take training and uh, aspire to be a hardcore data analyst business analyst junior data scientist or data scientist hadoop developer you can become a hadoop developer as well or you can become a predictive modeler so as i told you earlier uh, i'm assuming that everyone here here you know already worked on data already started building some models or have good knowledge of uh, reporting automation so they are comfortable with uh, some of the business cases etc so the people who already built the model they want to refresh in a structured way the whole model building technique the people who haven't built the model they want to learn from the scratch so that is what the idea of this group to me so <clears throat> i'll uh, open the forum for discussion let me know my understanding is correct or not so for this group these are the trainings that i am planning okay first we'll start with r programming and basic statistics within r programming we will practice a lot of our programming by using some data handling techniques and then i'll start with predictive modeling in r there we will go ahead with regression multiple regression multicollinearity loss regression decision trees model selection techniques etc and then uh, we'll start with machine learning once we are done with predictive modeling we'll go to neural networks svm random forest then uh, machine learning projects so we will take some of the real image data and try to see how to classify images or we will take some really huge uh, retail data and try to use machine learning techniques to solve them then i'll give a very brief introduction to big data i am not sure whether you'll be able to practice this on your laptop or not but i'll try to give you overall introduction to big data so that if you find interest within big data you might want to pursue that career you can get inside that so within big data there are two uh, what do you call uh, low hanging fruits which are uh, easy to learn that are hive and pig so we will uh, get an introduction to that as well and then uh, python programming python is really picking up these days and uh, if you are aspiring to be a data scientist python is becoming a, a kind of a necessary tool that's why we will learn python programming uh, and then uh, machine learning on python so whatever we discussed above within r we will quickly reflect within python so basically it it should not take a lot of time because uh, we have already done it in r we just need to change the coding syntax and see how it is different in python then we will uh, do some machine learning projects in python and then we will do one or two or maximum one big data project last two are optional depending on the energy level depending on the enthusiasm right at the end of the course there are some new uh, tools or new techniques that have come up recently that is spark and scala that we can discuss i'll again give an introduction to that and the final one is tableau people who are interested in knowing about tableau who can uh, you know take that uh, course For last two courses are optional but i would say the first 10 courses it's not just one class that is a particular module each module might contain 2 3 4 even 5 sessions sometimes so don't think these are all 50 sessions or anything we'll see it depends on how much time we take to finish these any questions do you have any questions so these are the course contents so i'll give a short 2 minutes break or 5 minutes break 
after the break we'll start with R introduction to R and R programming I hope everyone installed R and R studio both the tools if you haven't please download and install right away can you hear me okay so we'll start with R today because uh, the reason why we are learning R is we need at least a tool to run all our uh, data analytics or statistical algorithms there are many alternatives of R uh, R is an open source and it is really picking up in this particular uh, field of data science so that's why we'll start with R so what are the contents of today's class we will really go into basics of R uh, in today's class later on uh, we'll go to the basics of statistics and we try to implement them on R so before we even go to statistics basic statistics we need to have an idea about R what is R environment where should we write the code how to compile the code how to get the output how to identify the errors what are our functions what are our programs etc how to get help on R so all those bare minimal basics that we try to learn in this session so <clears throat> R is a programming language for data manipulation statistical computing graphs etc okay by knowing uh, best part about R is it's very easy to get started if we know the real basic essential uh, topics in R essential coding techniques within R then uh, we can just get started and go ahead and try to use it uh, the more you use it uh, the more familiar you will get and later on uh, you will be really comfortable in R so maybe only initial one or two weeks you will feel it it is tough to get used to because you might be coming from a different coding background but yes later on while you are using it you will find it much more intuitive and uh, easy to code so generally uh, what I say is a good learning path within R if you want to improve your R uh, coding skills this is the way you should go you start with basic environment coding syntax uh, where is what first bare minimal basics of R and then data handling within R how do we import export data join the data how do we filter the data etc data handling technique within R important functions in R that is the third step important functions and performing basic analysis basic statistics in R R has excellent graphic capabilities uh, it contains so many packages uh, as many as I think 7000 plus R supports a large user network R contains some statistical algorithms that are not yet available in other tools that's a very important point R today as of now itself it contains some uh, statistical methods and algorithms or specific uh, libraries that are not yet available in any other statistical tool it's uh, sometimes considered as a language rather than tool some people call it R language some people call it R tool so it's a comprehensive analytical tool it is really growing very well R can connect to different type of databases almost any type of database if R can't be connected somebody will write the library that can be you know used as a connector so R can connect to any type of database it has super visualization and graphic capabilities availability of uh, all statistical algorithms as I told you in fact uh, it has even rarest of the rare statistical algorithms available within R it has many more solutions for text mining uh, data handling data mining and machine learning Installation of R, I assume that everyone installed it, so I'm skipping this step. R Studio. What is R Studio? I have been talking about R. What is R Studio? R Studio is a user-friendly 
user interface for interacting with R. It is called IDE. Rather than directly coding in R, I can use R Studio. I can code in R Studio. Then the code will be submitted to again R only in within R. So the whole code will be submitted to R from R Studio. Output will be fetched and we will see the output within R Studio. So basically this is R Studio. The basic R console uh, looks not uh, very intuitive or uh, it's kind of really geeky I would say. Whereas R Studio makes it easy to interact with R. Can R Studio run without R? No, it can't. Because R Studio is just a kind of skin. R Studio is just an IDE that will indeed need the help of the core language, the core package that is R. So anything that is there in R Studio you see is just uh, whatever is there in R, we can actually interact with R in a easy manner. So is there any difference between R and R Studio? It's not really the difference. R Studio is just an IDE. These are called uh, IDEs or it is just a, a way we want to make it easy. Okay, I think if you are coming from other uh, environments to code in Java, you can use Eclipse IDE. To code in uh, SAS, you can use uh, Enterprise Guide or Enterprise Miner. So which will make we don't need to write a lot of code there. We just need to use some drag and drop options that will indeed be submitted to SAS. Similarly, we can use R Studio that will make our life easy while coding or while interacting with R or else you can directly write the code within R. Okay, that's not a problem. Is that clear? Okay. Downloading and installing R Studio is also easy. You just download, double click till and you will be able to install it. So R has three main uh, windows that is console, workspace, output. So now uh, everybody open R Studio. You open R Studio in your system and then you will see the console. This is what the console is. Here is where you write the code, R code. You submit the code here and then if there are any errors, errors will be shown here. So this is the console. If you are uh, doing this for the first time, let's do a very quick, uh, uh, what do you call, warm up kind of thing. Can everybody see my screen clearly? Yeah. So start typing along with me. So you go to console, you just type 68 plus 28 and hit enter. You'll get answer. So this, uh, I mean this, this is called the, that line that is blinking is the prompt. So when you go there and you write the code, when you hit enter, it will be auto submitted. You can use this as a scientific calculator as well. So go ahead and type this. I'm going to ask each one of you the answers of this quickly. Ravi, what is the answer of the third one? Debashish, what is the answer of fourth one, log 10? Devender, what is the answer of exponential of 5? Okay. Okay. 
Oke. Okay. Everyone write all the comments, not the command that I just gave you. Oke. Okay. I'm just checking is there any lag do I need to go a little slow or is this pace fine are you facing any issues on this online meeting please let me know any technical issues okay cool Okay, I'm moving to the next one that is a uh, workspace if you see on the top right hand side it says the environment so during our session we will have uh, so many things that will create so we can actually see all of the objects that are created within the workspace right now our environment is empty if you if we would have connected to a data if I would have imported a data set I can see that in the workspace the main objective of this whole R studio is to make make our interaction with R easy so basically if I want to import a data set I can just use import data set then I can see that in workspace let us suppose I'm creating I'm just showing an example we'll do it later anyway if I'm creating any new variable X uh, so yeah, I can see that in here if I'm creating a data set I can see that in the workspace so that is so that you don't miss out any of the objects output if the output is uh, yeah tell me if you have any questions if the output is uh, a simple number or most of the times we'll see the output in the console itself sometimes if you are creating a graph or table output uh, then uh, you will see that there will be a new output here if it is a graph then you will see it on plot so on the right hand side uh, below you will see the output in plots or else uh, most of the times it is console output sometimes the table output opens as a new table but uh, most of the times we will be working in this place that is console if you get a doubt that where do we write the code and submit it like in any other language we can write the code in something called source okay that we will see later on but most of the times uh, here we will be writing it's a kind of interactive uh, environment so we write we write the code we see the output and we go ahead if we want to save the code I'll I'll tell you a way to write the code on a notepad and then submitting it here is the first uh, basic operator that we should know that is called assign operator so this less than sign and then dash okay this helps this is if I say age so I'm assigning 15 to age I don't need to define what type of variable it is or anything I'm just simply assigning 15 to age to print age I just type age the output will be printed what exactly is this one this is the first element of the output okay that's why it says one okay. so these are the assign assignment uh, operators there are many of them uh, many types of assigning but we will follow one particular method that is uh, less than and dash whenever you see this the right hand side value will be assigned to the left hand side value please go ahead and 
type it everyone these four commands quickly very quickly create x y z and k what is the value of k what is the value of z what is the value of y tell me the value of y somebody okay tell me the value of z and k k is 10.908 okay do not consider these as very basic elementary things we just need to get really comfortable with r so it's better to go then from here later on we'll reach anyway the complicated code so going ahead with the next you're not okay somebody asked me a question i'm not getting the environment window is there a way to activate it okay you have to toggle between environment and history sometimes history will be shown sometimes environment will be shown you can do that or you can go to view environment okay even if you are not getting even then then i'll see in your system and i'll tell you okay you should be able to get it by default are you in r studio or r you sure you're in r studio right devashish let me see your screen you think you're in r so we need to get into r studio okay not a problem r and r studio are almost the same r studio just a, a skin or an environment for r okay what you can do is you go ahead within r you code it what you see is only console in r everything is command based okay no problem you go ahead and code it after this session you install r studio you will not find any difference only thing you will find additional windows okay no need to panic you go ahead uh, you continue the class with r okay everyone is in r studio who is in r who else is in r anil is in r why why not r studio okay <laughs> after the session please install r studio i mean it will be easy for you to uh, work with it okay no problem uh, you go ahead continue in r now you know the difference between r and r studio not a big crime so just uh, because all our sessions will be on r studio who else is on r ravi r studio or r okay cool deb r studio for linux okay. r studio okay cool fine uh the naming convention uh, i think like every other language uh, r has also some naming convention it must uh, every name should start with a letter okay you can't start with digits or periods or hash okay uh you can uh, i mean the name can contain uh, dots 
or it can contain digits but uh, you have to start with a letter now those of you or most of us are coming from SAS background R is case sensitive language R is case sensitive this lowercase new data is different from uppercase new data R is case sensitive most of the errors that you are going to make in next few days while working with R will be related to case sensitive issue because we are not I mean if you are coming from SAS background you haven't taken uh, special care in maintaining or remembering the case when you are defining the data set you don't really care whether it is uppercase or lowercase but most of the languages are case sensitive R is case sensitive language working with R quickly this is the lab do it just type as it is this is uh, uh, not to introduce you any of the functions it is just to make you uh, familiar with some of the uh, environment um, some of the working environment uh, windows within R so go ahead and type them see what is happening as you are typing in uh, first instance X R norm so maybe intuitively what does it say it says that I am trying to assign something to X R norm is the function that I am doing thousand it takes parameters thousand comma mean equal to 20 this is the second parameter comma SD equal to 5 you can guess that it's a normal distribution kind of thousand points mean 20 standard deviation 5 even if you don't know normal distribution just leave it it's we are trying to assign something to X so if you type it and press enter then you will see in your environment a number of thousand uh, with element is created now how do you print X you just type X enter it's printed thousand elements are printed how do we clear the window Control L clearing the console control L once again the same uh, points if I want my command back I can use up arrow people who worked on Linux they they'll know this uh, terminal and all that use up arrow down arrow up arrow my previous command twice okay R norm did you write R N O R M or R N O M okay uh, if I type up arrow so I'm typing like now my console is clean if I type up arrow I can see the previous commands if I type it 10 times I'll see the 10th last command that I entered I if I type it once up arrow if I hit it once that is the last command that is a command before that if I want to see the commands later typed after this so up arrow down arrow for previous commands okay now this is how I write the code and if I want to see the output I just type it and to clear the window I use control L okay now X is there I can use a function called mean mean of X this is mean of X I can assign it to some other value called M which is mean of X so I am assigning mean of X to M this is M I can also assign standard deviation SD of X to yes okay what are we trying to do here we are just getting familiar we are practicing the basic commands within our the assignment I'm assigning some values to X then I'm assigning mean to M I'm assigning standard deviation to S just learn put your focus on assigning whatever is happening it's okay I'll explain it later on put your major focus on assigning you should be very comfortable in assigning 
sometimes people tend to write mean of x and think that that is there somewhere unless until you assign it to some value you won't be able to use it later on i'm moving to the next slide here is a important part of our basics that is our packages what is the size of sas file that you installed last time what is the size of matlab file or spss uh, software that you have installed they are huge isn't it they are 2 gb 3 gb 4 gb what was the time taken to install sas last time not less than 15 or 20 minutes but you have observed that installing r was quick r is hardly how many mb it's not more than 1 gb for sure right so what happens in r when you download and install r and r studio or basically r it's not the complete package complete capability of r basically you downloaded some 30 packages and installed a basic version of r you can't do everything in that suddenly if i want to do some kind of 3d graphics or suddenly if i want to do neural networks or if i want to perform multicollinearity or some any uh, specific techniques with this 30 packages you might not be able to run that so you need to install that particular package then only you will be able to use that what do i mean by that those of you who worked on sas will know that for everything there is a proc procedure right here for every uh, you know algorithm for every uh, operation there is a package or if a package contains lot of functions in short right now if you go to packages window can you click on packages those who are on r might not be able to see it okay maybe there is a command that you can check what are the packages but uh, just observe it here you might not be having all these packages you might be having the basic 30 packages beyond that if you want to do anything extra you need to basically install that package there is a package caret classification and regression training that package might not be available for you there is a package car companion to applied regression that package might not be there in your system so but the basic packages will be available basic operations can be done so what to do when there is uh, when the package is missing you simply click on install install the package that is required how do i know what package is required for what operation one that comes from experience the other one you know we can search to perform this particular operation what is the package that is available in r it's like within sas to perform certain operation operations we need to use certain proc here we need to use certain package let's do an example okay of downloading the package so obviously packages will be downloaded from internet okay uh here is the lab create three random vectors x y z of size 1000 okay how do you create three random vectors x y z of 1000 size 1000 so here are the the code for creating the random vector so this is how i create the random vector x it has 1000 elements mean 20 sd5 similarly you can create y and z so you can create similarly i'll just use the same code the y 1000 elements mean 20 standard deviation 5 same remember these are normal value i mean normal random uh, values so you don't think that x is exactly equal to y they are random so and then uh, i'm creating another one z means random. so this is x this is y this is z okay now what i want to do is i want to draw a scatter plot scatter plot 3d 3d plot i want to see that in 3d view okay so what i need to do is 
I need to use a function called scatter plot 3D and I need to give the vectors x, y, z. Error could not find the function scatter plot 3D because this scatter plot 3D is part of a particular package and that package is not available for us that's why we are not able to do this operation what I need to do to perform this operation I need to install a package called scatterplot 3d the package name is scatterplot 3d I'm lucky the function name and package name is same here maybe sometimes the package name can be 3d plots within that there are many 3d plots scatterplot 3d is one of them okay so you need to install the right package so now I am installing the right package scatterplot 3d you just need to how do I install packages you go to packages click on install write the package name scatterplot there is scatter d3 scatterplot 3d you should know what package you want to install so scatterplot 3d and I click on install installing downloading successfully unpacked installed now remember R looks very light the reason for that is whatever you installed is not attached yet okay right now you install that package there is a way you should attach it so let us suppose over a period of time I have uh, installed around 2000 3000 5000 packages every operation on in every project I might not need all those 5000 packages I want to use with the package that is very specific for that operation here I want to use only scatterplot 3D. I don't want car or carrot or anything like that, right? Car, carrot and other packages. So what I'll do here is, what I need to do is, I need to use a command library to see the prompt whenever you type it. Let's say I typed lib. To see the uh, suggestions like this, you can use tab, okay? And select the right one or you can type the overall command so library within that library I want to take scatter plot 3d or else you can go here within packages after installing you will see somewhere scatter plot 3d okay you have to attach it so you have to click it then only you will be able to use it if you don't click it even after installing it even after installing it if you try to run this could not find the function because you install the package but you didn't attach the package I will attach the package run the code scatterplot 3d is created can you see that once again I'll repeat the whole process There are three vectors x, y, g, x, y, z. Then I want to draw a scatter plot. So I know the function for uh, drawing the scatter plot. It is scatter plot 3D, but R says could not find the function scatter plot 3D. Now that's not a mistake of anybody, it's just that package is not available. So I'll go to packages, I'll install packages, scatter plot 3D. The package can be anything. Package depends on the type of function or operation that you want to do. Then I'll say install. It is installing the package. Scatter plot. After installation, your job is not done. You have to attach the package. So this is how you can attach it or you can directly write uh, library and all that and then you run the same code scatterplot 3d this time the output will be appearing try this try this exact same thing here is the code
try it and let me know if you have any if you face any issues Once you are done, you just put it on chat window that you are done. Anil, are you done? Ravi, Ravi is done. Devashish? Moving on, here are the some of the useful packages inside R, okay, for data handling. Do you need to remember all these? No, not really. If something doesn't work, let's say one fine day you need to connect to ODBC server or PostgreSQL server or some one day you need to connect to Excel, then or maybe one day you want to connect to a SaaS data set then you will realize that oops I don't have the package I just can't directly download that data or import that data then you can do some uh, googling or you can take help of the uh, R documentation and find out that what is that package that handles this kind of uh, job and then uh, you install that particular package and if you use a particular package more than two three times then uh, you will automatically go for that package uh, without a uh, lot of uh, thinking
data visualization packages or ggplot2 ggplot2 plotly shiny remember these are one of the or some of the really most widely used data visualization packages on websites you see on websites and blogs lot of really attractive graphics okay uh, with good numbers and text pictures inside them those are created using ggplot2 and other graphics some of the advanced analysis packages are these we don't need to remember any of them what i meant to say there are packages specifically available for performing some specific tasks are data types so why we need to learn about data types without even learning data types we can actually survive in r but later on while you are doing some uh, analysis or some when you write some code you will get some specific errors this is this kind of operation can't be applied on that or there is something missing then you will be wondering every, everything is right the code is correct why i got that error because the data type and the function that meant to be on a particular data type you are trying to apply it on something else so the basic data type in r is vector i'll explain you what is a vector and then data frames or data frames are nothing but data sets kind of thing then there are lists other data types are matrix factor and array so the basic data types are vectors everything in r is a vector basic data structure in r is a vector vectors are the simplest objects in r okay vectors are indexed by integers okay what exactly is a vector it's a collection of uh, in more than one element like it can have one element also or it's a collection of more than one element so let's do an example in vector so if i just say name and i store my name in that okay that name if i type that is venkat and if i want to see is that a vector is vector is a function so is that name a vector it says true it's a vector if i store something called a number inside age is that a vector yes it's a vector first one is a character vector second one is a numeric vector there is only one element why we call it as a vector it's a single element vector can there be more elements in a vector yes there can be so within age you can c stands for concatenate operator because more than one element is there 15 17 16 15 16 so how many elements are there in age there are five elements within age is that a vector yes age is a vector obviously you can see that right away that the first age this one is a single element vector these are multiple element vectors okay so i have stored age then there is one more vector called english so i have let's suppose i have saved students age now i am storing their marks in english 30 is that a vector yes what about remaining command so i have created age english science name okay is age a vector yes so i did i mention it as a vector no by default r is taking everything as a vector anything that you assign is taken as vector is vector english object english not found why english is not found because i didn't give here english so there is spell error that's why it is not taking now if i give the same thing english is this a vector yes it's a vector okay so there are some of them are numerical vectors some of them are character vectors now what is the advantage of vectors why everything is a vector while building r people have realized that 
maybe if we work with vectors it's very easy for some operations like loops and uh, iterative operations they are very easy to do with vectors let us suppose there is this vector age if i want to add 3 to each of the element in age if it if all of them if age is not a vector if age is just a variable which has five elements then i have to go to first element of age add three then go to second element of age add three like that i have to do it iteratively if age is a vector if i just say age plus three uh, we will get to see the operation being operated on all the elements of the vector it's very easy you can refer to everything using uh, you know one operation similarly i can add, if i want to add 10 to all the values within english so english plus 10 english one will be created so basically adding 10 to each and every value within english marks then can i add two vectors yes you can english one plus science science was created english one total so to create total vector i don't need to run a complex uh, two loops like for take first element of english add science to it take a second first element of science add to it no you can do a lot of operations quickly in fact you can even find the ratio so basically a lot of iterative operations i mean here there are only five elements that's why you might not see this as a complicated uh, issue if there are more and more elements within a given vector by just doing simple operators we can do a lot of calculations let me just show one more example then I'll give you a chance for practice so I have created a random variable uh, with uh, I mean just thousand random values this is X now what I want to do is I want to calculate X minus for from each of the elements I want to subtract mean so X is this and what is mean of x mean of x is 19 so x minus mean of x so deviation of each element from the mean if I just write this the whole operation will be in fact I can store this whole thing in something called deviation so this variable dev is created just by using simple operator and it is applied on all the elements of x is that clear now how do we access each element in a vector let's say age is a vector no this age is not there case sensitive age is a vector what if I want only specific element of age what if I want only third element of age or second element of age that is how you access second element of age a specific element of a vector what if I want to access from 3 to 5 I want to see I just want to get last three values 3 4 5 so I would say 3 from 3 to 5 3 colon 5 these are the element what if I want to take everything except second one it's like I want to access everything except second one if you want to access only second one you type like this what if you want to just avoid that one you just put minus in front of that so I'm accessing everything except that one what if I want to update a particular element let's say age the third one shouldn't be actually 15 it shouldn't it should be 17 or something then I can access that particular element and then replace it with the element that I want now age is updated age 3 is 19 you might be wondering why still age has five elements here I didn't do any change with to age I just accessed that's why there are four elements but age originally still kept like that only so age here was having five elements and the third element is 16 
it is now replaced with 19. Fifth element of age, if I want to replace the fifth element of the age with, let's say 21, I can replace it and you can see age, fifth element 21. So those are the basic elements, uh, the basic form of any variable within R is called a vector. Everything is a vector. There are vector types. There are numerical and character vectors. You can see that by using a function called class. So this is a numeric vector. There is a name that is a character vector. Okay. So let's do these uh, examples. Let's do some warm up. Just start with this name. Write your name in that check whether it is a vector or not you just wrote the name how come uh, you know r directly took it as a vector because everything is considered as a vector within r so do this quickly put your name inside that check whether it is a vector or not is dot vector is a function put your age inside that check whether that is also a vector or not create those two Once you are done, let me know. I'll move to the next uh, slide. Yes, yep. So to create multiple uh, values in a vector, you have to use C operator, that is concatenate operator. I want to clarify something here you might not be creating vectors manually like this while you are working on R. This is just for practice. Uh, most of the times we import the data and it will automatically create the variable vectors, etc. Here just for practice uh, to get uh, started with vectors we are creating on our own. So try to replicate the same. Create four vectors with concatenate operator. Create vector age, create vector English, science, name. Once you are done, ping me. Do not think that these are all very elementary. Why am I doing this? Since this is the first class, some of you are working with R. This is your first one hour in R. So it's okay to do elementary stuff. It will give you confidence later on. The basics we shouldn't miss. That's why we are doing all this elementary stuff. We will slowly get into complicated topics. It's, it is not only learning about these vectors, it is also to make you comfortable in the environment, our environment. Where are you getting the error, where to code, how to code smartly, how to use previous commands, etc. Create these four vectors, age, English, science, name. Now use the function is vector age is vector English if you are done let me know I'll show the next one accessing the vector accessing the vector elements
so that is how you create the vectors and then uh, yeah then what is the use of uh, having the vectors that is we can write a lot of things without any loops so practice these add 3 to age then print age and then uh, just try to do these operations quickly then we will move on to the next slide Okay, I'm moving to the next one. accessing we have the vectors now how do we access the specific elements of the vector now this is a very important slide because later on we will be specifically accessing so when we download a data set each variable will be stored as a vector and sometimes we want to specifically particularly uh, focus on some of the rows or columns so we need to know how to access as I told you, each vector has many elements. Our vectors have five elements each. So you can access the elements that you are willing to. So you print the vector, access the third element from second to fifth element, avoiding a particular element and accessing everything else, accessing an element and replacing it with something else, etc. 